on first glance you'll tell yourself hey hey stop the nonsense ah, hey hey guys welcome back to actually come my reviews julian here how's it going did i say how's it going twice hey guys how's it going julian here welcome back to actually come my reviews after four videos of the seven series we finally have the car for a full-on review If you're thinking of trading in your car for this 7 Series right here, why don't you try selling it with Quotes instead? Quotes helps you sell your car quickly and easily. With a new Quotes doorstep, get a professional inspection by our certified mechanics at your convenience anywhere on the island. Quotes will then auction out your car online to its wide network of dealers to bid on your car. Once bidding is complete, Quotes will update you with their best offer price at no obligation. It's that easy. To find out more, visit quotes.com.sg That is Q-U-O-T-Z.com.sg Now back to the review. Now on first glance, you think that this car is really overly exaggerated. I'm sort of inclined to agree. When I first saw the car, I went, oh man, it's just too much with the larger than live kidney grill right here, the thickness of it all. But get this, it has ample presence and you cannot deny it. I've been spending a couple of days with this car now and I'm starting to like the looks of it. When I'm at the car park, when I look at the car, I just go, wow, it's really, really cool. But what I really have to say is this. These are actually Swarovski crystals, so BMW collaborated with the brand to provide this exclusive daytime running lights. The headlights are actually right here. And I, 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 I thought that I don't know what to say after that. Now at the side, this car comes with really, really cool futuristic looking 21 inch rims, almost looking like Wolverine style. Right. It might be a little bit difficult to clean, but I mean, it's, it's really cool. It's really, really eye catching. But what I really want you guys to know is this two-tone paint right here. It's an optional paint that will set you back some thirty four dollars to $36,000. It looks really, really nice. The top portion will always be four grey. There'll be eight different options, right? So it's either four grey or four black. But the bottom portion, you can actually change the colour. It can be red, can be blue, can be black. I mean, your call. But if you're into the two-tone, the 7 Series offers that to you now. Um, at the side, okay, this thing is really cool. One thing I have to show you. If I open the doors like this, right? There's a button inside that allows you to close the doors automatically. And if someone were to stand at the side of the door, the radar sensors here as well as here will prevent it from knocking into the someone or prevent it from knocking into the wall. So it's still safe but yet fully automated. It might be a marketing gimmick, you may think, but once you're inside the car and once you're living with the car, it sort of feels... It almost feels like a crime to not have that automatic door button. Almost. Now, around the back, I know there seems like there's a lot of things going on, but it's actually not. I'm actually glad that BMW didn't do the they like spending the whole full width of the rear. In, in a sea of luxury cars that do that all the time, to do this, I think, kind of stands out a little bit. So it's instantly recognizable as a 7 Series, especially at night. Open this up and you are faced with 540 litres worth of hauling capacity. Yes, it loses out to the S-Class because the S-Class has 10 litres more, but it definitely beats the Audi A8 because Audi A8 only has 505 litres. 540 litres could fit the trolley and the luggage. It, it'll pass. We didn't bring it today, but it'll pass. Trust me. The BMW 7 Series is priced from $579,000 to $609,000. The 3-litre turbocharged engine produces 282 brake horsepower and 425 Nm of torque. The 8-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.7 seconds. The car has a claimed fuel consumption of 12.7 km per litre. For more details on the BMW 7 Series or any other car, Head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Now admittedly, the back seat is the place to be, especially in the 7 Series, and rightfully so, right? It's crazy comfortable, it's really, really well cushioned, and obviously I'm getting ample leg room, ample head room. I'm about 1.6 meters tall, right? So 
even if you're like 1.8 to 1.85, this car will definitely swallow you no fuss, no problems at all. If it's a party for three, no sweat because you can just move to the center, put your feet up like this. It's, you're not going to eat much into the side shoulder room or even, you know, leg or knee room at all. So it's still going to have ample space for three. You also have isofix points right here and here and if it's just party for two and you're doing some business discussion you can knock this down open this up you can put your stuff inside here you can probably put your phone here right and charge because there's usb-c ports here if you want to have some cup of coffee cup holders here all set functional it is at best, it's as best as you could possibly imagine, right? There are aircon vents here, you have more storage space here, and get this, this is how a magazine holder should be. Full-on leather, nice rubbery feel to it. This is what car makers should do for their cars. But, but, but what I really want to highlight is this. This smartphone looking device allows the rear passengers to adjust the seats, the blinds, the light, even the modes if you want to, from relaxed and expressive to digital art and personal, it's all here. And when you choose this and the ambient lighting changes, the lines that you see on the sun, the sun roof here changes accordingly. So you can't really see it now, but it's, trust me, it's a thing of beauty at night. Now I know I said that there were automatic doors and you have to press the button by the side for it to close, which you can. But as a driver, the moment you get in, you gotta press the brake and start the engine. When you do that, the door will still close. Check it out, I'm just gonna press the brake now. <laughs> so, is this really small attention to detail that, I really, that really made me fall in love with this car? I, I am so into this. Like I said, once you don't have this function, it almost feels like a crime. Like, I, I need this in my car, I want this in my car. But, yeah. Again, anyway, uh, you're faced with a, a really simple looking steering wheel, multifunctional, no less. It feels really, really good, but it's what's beyond that that really catches your eye, right? This huge long screen that now runs on OS 8, which is BMW's latest operating uh, system. And of course, everything here is controlled from this nice rotary, not this crystal looking thing. Nice feel to it. Very tactile indeed. And even the volume has got this nice bling bling to it. There's no lag. It's almost like you're operating on your phone. So it's really, really nice. Everything's right here. Ridiculous. Um, so as a result, it's not cluttered. It's not cluttered here at all. It's, it's kind of clean and very neat and nice, which is kind of what I like. You also get wireless charging pad right here. Two very premium looking, individualized cup holders, as you can see. So you can open and close for your passengers and if there's no one here and don't like it to be open, you can just close it like this. Soft close, no less. Open this up. You have a small little space to put your barang barangs inside. There's also two USB-C ports here to charge your phone. Uh, seats are equally comfortable. It's as comfortable as the ones at the back. Uh, everything feels really, really good because you don't just get the leather swath dashboard, right? You get this nice kind of marble looking trim as well and more diamond looking stuff here sort of displays the ambient lighting. Again, depending on what you choose, can be expressive, can be individual, can be whatever. Of course, the lights will change according to that. Sort of feels very, very tech savvy, luxury. It's the epitome of what a flagship sedan should be. But there's one complaint, one complaint. I know I'm nitpicking, but I have to complain about something. To open up the glove compartment, you press a button here and it opens really, really nicely. I kind of like that. But I I know it sounds really silly of me to say this, but I thought that it will automatically close when I press again, but it doesn't. So I have to manually do it. It's annoying because everything seems automated, but not this. The only question is, can the 7 Series drive as luxurious as it feels? It's one way to find out. So the BMW 735i that we have here today has this 3-litre turbocharged straight-six engine, pumps out some 
combined 282 brake horsepower and 425 newton meters of torque gets from 0 to 100 in some 6.7 seconds. Now, these figures admittedly is lesser than the BMW S Class 450L. That car is faster too. But, in all honesty, I'm not so concerned with the figures and I reckon people who buy the S-Class even shouldn't even be that concerned about these figures because it's all about busking in the luxury of a limo like this. This car makes you feel like taking it easy, just relax and slow. Even though it is more than capable of performing overtaking maneuvers with absolute ease. You just want to take it easy. You don't really want to floor the pedal. You don't really want to manhandle the car. And for a pine-sized driver like me, to pilot a huge car like the 7 Series, genuinely, in all honesty, between you and me, it requires a lot of confidence. But every time I take a look at my mirror just to check that I'm in the lane, I'm definitely in the lane. I'm not threading even on the line. It's so easy to just place on the road. It's, it's, it's effortless. And just as effortless as how smooth, buttery, creamy smooth this car is capable of on the tarmac. It goes over all the bumps and ruts with absolute ease, right? Broken tarmac is, it almost floats over without feeling floaty and boaty. You know how big cars can really get very floaty and boaty? Not this. This just feels all right, man. And I think what I can really appreciate is this. <sighs> See that? Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> it'll still go, it'll still go quick if you need to. If you want to practice a little bit of hooligan, hool, hooliganism, that's the word. If you want to practice a little bit of hooliganism on the road, this car will still satisfy your needs, it'll still satisfy your wants. But I don't know if it's age that's catching up. I want to just take it easy on the road, you know, I just want to enjoy myself. This luxurious tech feel, ridiculously large car. This car, look, the predecessor was already huge to begin with. This car is longer, wider and taller than its predecessor. Even then, even then, it feels absolutely ridiculously easy to place on the road, man. And you know the best part of all this, when I first got the car, in all honesty, when I first got the car, I thought that this car looked really exaggerated. It's just overly done. I just thought there's too much happening, there's too much going on, just like the i7. It's just... And you could forgive the i7, which is the electric version of this car, because it's an electric car, right? I mean, you want to have a little bit of exaggeration just to show people that, you know what, it's an electric car. From tip to tip, just tell yourself, I mean, who in the right frame of mind would spend half a million dollars on a car like this when you probably wouldn't even use 30% of the tech inside here. Now that I've been driving it, I feel like I want one. I feel like not having one is just a crime. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Indeed. Is the BMW 7 Series a will-buy, won't-buy, or go-try? I reckon it is a will-buy. To me, it is a must-buy. If, if your pockets are deep enough and it's time for you to change car, this is the car you have to seriously consider buying because it does everything at its best. It sets the benchmark so high for a flagship model that it makes a lot of cars in its class look like they can do better. Yes, it is expensive, but you're, you're, guys, you're getting a flagship model. I mean, it's, it's, this is not a five or a three, you know. You're, you're getting a lot of tech, a lot of comfort, a lot of luxury in the 7 Series. Not having a car like this just feels like a crime. I don't know if it's age catching up, but if I had pockets deep enough, I will get this car for sure. So there you have it guys, that is the review of the BMW 7 Series. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I have driven it. And yes, I have enjoyed this car tremendously. Uh, please don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please comment in the comment box below. Let us know what you think about 
the 7 series is it a will buy won't buy or co try also you can hit the bell notification up there so that you will be notified every time we upload new videos also do not forget to follow us on tiktok our handle is at sgkarmat in the meantime stay safe be well ciao for program uh, no listen uh, I'm, I'm driving now uh, can you call back later please for the loan, sir, will you be interested for the loan uh, with no, Citibank? No, no, thank you. Citibank is... No, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Bye. Have a good day. You too.